do you like my location for today's video? I went to my normal spot, my normal little corner in the house where I usually film. It's easier there. Everything's kind of already set up for me. And I, it's a different time of day. And the lighting was such that I looked like dead. <laughs> and I thought, okay, no, we're going to go to a different spot, different lighting and see if I can manage this a little bit. So actually, this is pretty, isn't it? I like this background too. Anyways, I don't know. Maybe you guys don't even notice that kind of stuff. Let me know. Do you have a preference about where I film? Do you have a favorite spot? Do you like me to mix it up more? Or do you just not care at all because you're really not here for the background? Today, I wanted to talk to you about something I've been thinking about. That's what we do here, right? I say that every week. <laughs> do you ever feel like all you hear is the bad news? Do you watch the news or read the news on your phone? Does it feel like everything is just truly awful, literally everywhere? And the fact of the matter is that that might be true. And that's what's so tricky about this whole thing. How do we, as Christians, hear the news, see what's going on in the world, have a realistic view of what's happening in the world and not get just absolutely discouraged? How do we not give up? My husband has a thing that he says whenever life just seems too hard. He says, come quickly, Lord Jesus. And then he shortens it to CQLJ. <laughs> come quickly, Lord Jesus. Isn't that right? When we lived in Barcelona, Spain, we used to say to our friends in Barcelona, have you ever wanted to go visit America? It was an easy enough question, kind of a getting to know you question. And more often than not, they would say, oh, no. And we'd say, oh, why not? And they'd say, the drive-by shootings. And I thought that was really interesting that when people think about America who don't live here, they think that these drive-by shootings are happening everywhere to everyone. But that's how it is. When you get news about a place, you assume that what you're hearing is the terrible news of what the entire situation is like all the time. But when I was listening to the Daily Audio Bible, which is a podcast I listen to where he reads the one-year Bible each day so that in a year he goes through the whole Bible, and I was listening to it today, and he finished the book of Judges and started the book of Ruth, and I noticed something that I wanted to point out to you today. Have you ever read the book of Judges? It is terrible. It's the kind of stuff, it makes Arnold Schwarzenegger movies look like kids cartoons. <laughs> it is so violent and so rough. And this is the Bible we're talking about here. And the very end of Judges is probably the most terrible story in the entire Bible. It is. It's the most terrible story in the entire Bible. I'm not even going to tell you the story, but terrible things are happening. Things are going very badly in the land of Israel. God's people. It's a mess. It's disgusting. It's horrible. And it's terribly sad. And it says in the very last verse of Judges, in those days, Israel had no king. Everyone did as he saw fit. Or in some versions, everyone did what was right in his own eyes. You read the book of Judges and you think it was an absolute mess. This is how it is everywhere. And then you turn the page to the book of Ruth and it says, in the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land and the man from Bethlehem and Judah together with his wife and two sons went to live for a while in the country of Moab. And this is the beginning of the story of Ruth. What does God make so clear in the beginning of the book of Ruth is that this is the same timeline as the book of Judges. When all those terrible, horrible things were happening in the book of Judges and everyone was doing as he saw fit, Ruth steps into the picture. And Ruth is like a breath of fresh air, a light shining in the darkness to remind us that all is not lost even when everything seems lost. Have you read the story of Ruth? It's an interesting story of loyalty. Boy, the way Ruth stands by Naomi, her mother-in-law, when all else is lost. She's such a good, meek, person, obeying her mother-in-law, choosing to serve her God instead of the God that she was raised to know. You see, even when everyone was doing as they saw fit, there were people walking with God. And that's what I wanted to remind you guys about today. When you look around and when you, when you see what's going on in our world and you hear the news and you're online and on the social media and it seems 
like everything is lost, like everything is bad, God is working. He's doing good things. We don't hear those stories as much, but there are people walking with God. Take heart. You're not alone. You can do this. And there will be others walking with you. As you're walking with God, you will look next to you and see, oh, look at her. She's walking with God too. Oh, look, there's another one. You can do this, friends. Keep on keeping on. Seek him first. Keep your gaze on him and not on the scary things going on around us. And he will give you peace and he'll let you know that you're not alone. Thanks, guys. This has been your Tuesday Talk. I hope you guys have an awesome day.